Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Stephen Borrega from Anchor Gold. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Now, for all of you out there in Investor Intel that have been following Stephen for quite some time, because you're you know, a very well-known entrepreneur, I understand that you're kind of changing the direction for Anchor. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. It's more, more so adding to the direction for Anchor. Uh, we're going to continue with the hard rock side, but we have decided that we're going to move into oil and gas as well in Cambodia. So we are in the process of finalizing our first application with the Cambodian government for our onshore oil block. And that's going to run in parallel with our hard rock assets where we still, will, we still have approximately 1,000 square kilometers on five licenses, four of which are under partnership currently. So our model of a project generator continues. It's just we're expanding into the oil and gas side of things as well because we see great potential there. And of course, as a project generator, uh, can you just tell us a little bit more about Cambodia? Because not all of us uh, understand the opportunity that is there right now. Sure. You know, Cambodia's advantage is the fact that it has, there's, there's operations both on hard rock and oil and gas on all, all sides of the country. So in Thailand, Laos, as well as in Vietnam, we see production in the hard rock side, uh, large scale uh, base metal operations, precious metals, as well as offshore and onshore gas production. So, when we, when we arrived in Cambodia 10 years ago, none of that potential was identified and we're looking at, at uh, taking advantage of the fact that as, as a first mover in the country, we're moving towards bringing now on, uh, onshore oil potential in, towards our shareholder base. And for all of you investors out there that have made a lot of money in the cannabis industry and are looking to diversify, one thing you'll enjoy about the Anchor Gold team is you guys are committed to ongoing education in the communities that you're that you're presently in. So can you also provide us with an update on how your gold project is going? Sure. Uh, the gold projects in general are, uh, are moving along. We just took on a new partner out of Canada, Homey 5 Resources, committed to $3.65 million on the Ban Lung license. That's an epithermal gold uh, target called Ocala West that we're looking at. But it's actually polymetallic, so there's a copper porphyry that we're interested in as well. So from that perspective, there's ongoing drill programs right now with, uh, with uh, the Homey 5 Resources Group. Uh, we're ongoing work programs with Jogmec out of Japan on the Oya Das South license. Uh, we're going to be doing some more drilling this season as well. And Emerald Resources out of Australia, the license that we have in partnership with them is to the south and they are bringing their million ounce deposit online and they see the potential for feed feeder stock on the Cognac license. So we've got quite a bit of hard rock work being done right now and uh, and we'll be working straight through to the rainy season, which happens in June. And then there's another example of, of competitive advantages, I would argue, with Anchor Gold, is your ability to create such substantial partnerships. Would you like to highlight some of those? Absolutely. Well, we've been, we've been fortunate, again, to be the first, first ones to the table in, in Cambodia. And I think Cambodia's been on the radar with a lot of these majors over the years. Jogmec is uh, the Japanese government's exploration arm. Obviously, is our largest partner as of a $11 billion entity explorer around the world. Solely interested in base metals. Uh, we brought them on board three years ago for a three-year commitment of $3 million on the Oya Dow South license. But it, I think that actually helped to de-risk the country writ large from a hard rock perspective. Once majors like that come to play and actually start spending some serious dollars in, in country, it puts us on the radar with the others as well. So I think it helps the country at large having such a great partner on the table. Well, I know I was very impressed when I read that news release, but what should we as shareholders anticipate perhaps in the next quarter or two? I think obviously the biggest uh, uh, mover for us is the oil and gas side of things. As we, once, we've, once we've acquired our first license, uh, the potential for additional acquisitions are there. And what we're looking at is, is actually the discovery of a new foreland basin. And for, without getting too, uh, too involved in the geology, some of the world's largest oil basins are foreland basins. And we're pretty excited by what we're seeing right now. If this turns out to be such, uh, the potential is, is, uh, is, quite ex is quite exciting. The thing about Cambodia is they need both oil as well as gas production. So if the thermal maturity turns out that it's more gas related rather than the oil side of things, there's still a ready-made market in country. As of right now, this summer, Chris Energy out of Singapore will be bringing the first offshore platform online. And the Chinese, in, in partnership with Cambodia, are just spent $1.6 billion on the first refining capacity. 
So the infrastructure is coming along, and I think after five years of looking at oil and gas, the time is right for us to get involved. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for updating us today, Stephen. It's good to see you. It's great to see you too. Thanks so much.